Hello. How are? Look at that. How what? See that young guy there? He reminds me of a slow motion replay in a movie. <laughs> Say, who is he anyway? Uh, he's my nephew. Huh? He's a bit slow. It's his first day. Uh, hey, Sonny! This is Uncle Chu. Oh, hi. Now then, Uncle Chu is the boss. The one who pays us. Hello. Sonny's just finished a course on gas welding and flame cutting, and I thought this would be good for him. This is a tough job, I hope you know. You have to squat all day long. The work environment is hot and uncomfortable as well. But it pays if you can take the pressure. So give it your best and stick at it. Oh, yes. We need to order more cylinders. Really? But I just checked we still have some. I know that. But we've a big workload. If we leave it too late, then the supplier might not deliver them in time. So I thought we'd order more just in case. <laughs> yeah, but it means spending money. You know as well as I do. Business is getting harder. <laughs> Every day our overheads increase. <laughs> if it's not labor cost, then it's new government safety measures. You've no idea. It cost me an absolute fortune. I mean, look at me. I'm getting thinner on top. At least <laughs> I save on hairbrushes. Uncle Chu, you know the old tree that's outside the factory gates? Yeah, why? You moan so much about everything. I think you must have given it depression. That's why its branches are about as bald as your head. Watch your mouth, young man. No wonder you don't have a girlfriend. Who says so? In fact, she's real pretty. Hey, hey! Oh yeah, in your dreams, pal. Who on earth would fancy someone like you? Look who's talking. I got a brain. Go to hell. Look, Uncle Chu, there's a way to save money. Why not buy some big cylinders, then transfer into small ones? One big cylinder can fill six small cylinders. It'll save you money. Forget it. It's true that transferring could save you some money, but it's dangerous. You mustn't do it. You see, the pressure in the big cylinders and small cylinders may be different. Also, the equipment used for the transfer isn't approved and doesn't meet industry standards. And the worker hasn't received proper training for it, so you could cause an explosion and get yourself killed. You're exaggerating. You always think you're smart. You want to save a few dollars by transferring gas. But look at the risk you'd be taking. Think about it. You know nothing about safety. Any girl would keep well out of your way if she had any sense at all. What she said's true, Fat. I remember a couple of years ago. There was one of the workers at the factory tried to do the same thing. He used a pipe to transfer gas from a big cylinder to a small cylinder. But the pressure was so strong, you know, that the cylinder exploded. It was a terrible accident. He was thrown into the street and lost both his legs. It's not that difficult. Sonny, fat's bad habits. Don't copy them. Oh, sure. Hey, don't say that. Come on, it's to ensure our safety in the workplace. Brother Fat, are you okay? Are you sick, huh? Hey, you were cutting lead pipes yesterday. I remember, I saw you. I bet you didn't wear a mask, and the ventilation wasn't good, so you inhaled metallic fumes into your lungs. It could be metal fume fever. Come on, it's only a cold. You never know. You'd better go and see a doctor about it. From now on, I want you to wear a mask. In fact, before work commences, the worker should set up an appropriate protective screen and wear suitable personal protective equipment. For example, wearing a safety helmet can protect your head from falling objects. A suitable eye protector can protect your eyes from welding sparks, slag, and arc flashes. If several workers are working in the same place, a protective screen should be used to protect people in the vicinity from the work area. During the welding process, the welding torch or workpiece can create toxic gases and toxic metallic fumes. In cases such as these, the worker should always make sure to wear half-mask respirator to avoid inhaling any pollutants that can be harmful to health. A leather apron or overall will protect the workman's body and skin from burns caused by sparks, slag and arc flashes. Insulation gloves, safety footwear and insulation mats can protect the worker from electric shock. 
Some work processes such as cutting, polishing, and scraping can create a lot of noise, in which case earmuffs may need to be used. Hey, sunglasses don't give you protection. Their lenses aren't effective in filtering the strong light or protecting against impact. You see, they don't cover the eyes completely like this. It's important to choose and use suitable personal protective equipment correctly in order to avoid or minimize the work hazards involved in welding. Also, before starting work, make sure there are no flammable or combustible materials in the workshop. Objects that are too big to move should be covered up properly with fire-resistant materials such as a fire blanket. A fire watcher should also be appointed to take charge of implementing fire prevention measures and related matters. There should be sufficient fire extinguishers, buckets of sand and fire hoses installed. This fire prevention equipment must be readily accessible. Also inspect and ensure there is good ventilation and sufficient lighting in the workplace. When the weather is hot, take extra care to prevent heat stroke at work. Avoid getting a gas hose bent, twisted or walked on. This prevents gas blockage and damage to the hose. If ventilation is insufficient and the process produces large amounts of toxic fumes or gases cannot dissipate properly, a local exhaust ventilation system must be used to clear the fumes. When working in a confined area, workmen must be given a sufficient supply of air. With a gas cylinder, it must be upright and fastened. When you're welding, take care. Keep the cylinder a good distance from the job. Workmen must be careful when lighting and turning off the blowpipe to prevent flashback and sustained backfire. Do not hang a lit blowpipe on top of the gas cylinder shroud or leave it lying anywhere without proper supervision. After a welding or cutting process is finished, turn off the blowpipe and the gas supply valve and also release the pressure in the hose. Before leaving the workplace, ensure that all debris, sparks and work pieces are completely cool to avoid any possibility of a fire starting. 30 minutes after the work is finished, the fire watcher should inspect the workplace to check if any sparks or residual heat from the welding process has caused a fire to start. When performing electric arc welding, ensure it's connected to a suitable power point, that the welding equipment is earthed, and that safety equipment, such as an automatic voltage regulator and a residual current device, are installed. Insulation equipment should be present in the workplace too, such as an insulation mat and non-conductive stand. Electrical wires must be tidied up to avoid people tripping over them. If you follow all the safety measures, then we won't have any accidents. Hey, I'm poor anyway. What does it matter? Who cares if I die? Listen, brother. Money's one thing, but you only live once. If something happens, your folks suffer. You're always saying that you have a girlfriend. You should think about her. Ah. It's best to be careful, isn't it? As it happens, I have her photo, oh, right? No, I gotta go. <laughs> hey, it's just a photo. Hey, I'm the foreman. I'm responsible for you. So do as you're told. Whatever you say. Well then, per regulations, we've carried out all the proper safety measures. I see there you have some posters, but it's not enough. You ought to put them where they're visible, where the workers can see them. If you do that, they won't forget occupational safety. Apart from that, an employer should provide a safe and healthy work environment. Provide resources for the management of health and safety in industrial operations. Issue safety regulations and safe working procedures. And ensure these regulations and procedures are in line with the prevailing laws. Ensure the training received by employees and their experience matches their assigned tasks. Ensure that responsibilities for health and safety management are appropriately allocated and that the relevant staff can efficiently fulfill them and ensure that all accidents and dangerous occurrences are investigated and any suggestions made are suitably followed up. Hey boss. Huh? We're done. Oh good. I've employed a new supervisor here. He'll monitor the safety conditions in the workplace. He's starting tomorrow. That's very good. Heh. <laughs>
Chu always gives orders. Now he's taking some for a change. <laughs> of course. He's the safety officer. A real pro. We've all got to listen. Why should I listen? Just because he's better educated? Excuse me. Oh, wait. I, I was just kidding. Were you really? Oh, hey, come on. This is serious. A life and death matter. Huh? It's a welding area. You shouldn't be smoking. What's more, it's very dangerous, too, to light a blowpipe with your lighter. The temperature of 3,200 degrees Celsius will not only burn your lighter, it could cause an explosion. You'll get burned as well. So then, remember, always use a spark lighter. Yeah, okay, okay. Good morning. Let me introduce our new supervisor. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kong Wing Tat. Now, to enhance your knowledge of welding and flame cutting procedures, I've asked Tat here to give a short talk. <laughs> I'm sure that you've all obtained your welding safety card. So now, a few questions. Is this right? No. no. What about this? It's, it's better. much better. Of course, when welding inside big machinery, oil tanks, steel structures, and metal containers, we must avoid sitting or leaning on the workpiece while working. Personal protective equipment is essential, as is an insulation stand or mat to prevent contact with live conductors. When it rains, all work must be stopped at once. Is this right? No! What about this? That's, That's much, much better. better. That's right. When changing an electrode, it's vital always to wear insulated welding gloves. And if necessary, turn off the power at the transformer end before changing the electrode. When installing, tidying, or checking electric wires, turn off the power of the transformer. Is this right? No. no. And what about this? Yes, yeah, much better. That's right. If you're tired, son, you shouldn't be at work. If the ventilation's bad, accidents easily occur. A naked flame is never used to light the blowpipe. Use a spark lighter. And by the way, smoking is forbidden while welding. Also, do not leave flammable materials such as paper, cotton, or wood near the welding area. Is this right? Yeah! Sure, I'll take three. She's nice, but what is it to you if you are dead? So, follow these measures and you'll see her movie again. Next thing I'm going to talk about is ensuring occupational safety and doing your duty. Sir, what duty? Do you mean like getting the job finished on schedule? <laughs> that just ensures you get paid. Now what I meant was, the employees work safety obligations under law. First, every employee in this trade must receive safety training provided by the employer and follow all relevant safety guidelines set down. Second, before starting work, all welding equipment must be inspected to make sure it's properly installed and a check made of the environment to see if it adds a hazard to the welding or cutting job. Third, use and wear as appropriate all safety equipment and personal protective equipment provided by the employer. If there is a problem with the equipment, inform the management at once. Fourth, if an accident occurs, report it immediately and take relevant emergency measures. Assist relevant staff to find the cause of the accident. What? I'm just a worker here. What's it got to do with me? A lot. If we are clear about equipment usage, not only will it make our work easier, it'll make it safer. Yes, you're right. Therefore, these safety devices are essential. They ensure peace of mind. Not just for us, but for our families, too. But all these procedures, how can we follow them? With all the checking, there's no time left for work. The law says we must do it. After all, these safety measures are here to protect us. 
I may not know much about these safety measures, but in over 10 years, I've never had a problem. And when you do, it'll be too late. That new supervisor, he's really good. He's a pro. Yeah, a waste of our time or like it. Oh, sure. He's educated, that's why you're jealous of him. I like the way the guy talks, how he explains things. At least after listening, I know what to do and what not to do. Well, work safety is very important. <gasps> Coffee. Hey, he scared me. Your buns. What happened to that guy's face? Oh, you mean old Chung? I've not seen him before. He just started today. He used to be a welder like you guys. No, no way. way! It's true. He had an accident with a gas cylinder, gas leak. He didn't notice, and it exploded. Just look at him now. Not just his face, it's his leg too. Even his wife left him. He can't go back to the same job. So he got a job as a waiter. <sighs> I was very careless. Yeah. In the old days, we didn't have the law to protect us. Workers now have to take training courses in workplace safety. They can't work until they obtain a safety card to make sure they have a basic knowledge of welding and cutting. There's also a supervisor to participate in risk assessment for welding and cutting. He also helps in formulating safety regulations. In addition, he makes regular inspections and maintenance to ensure machinery functions properly. He also provides guidance and supervision for welders to ensure they follow safe working procedures. He reports incidents, helps in investigations, and suggests preventative measures. And he checks the workshop to ensure our safety. Ah, workers today are much better protected. We have to deliver in two days. We'll have to hurry. It should be okay. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, it's five o'clock. I'm out of here. I've got things to do. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, I'm meeting my girlfriend. She's arriving today and she's really pretty, huh? <laughs> hey, no you don't. What's up? You know you haven't closed the cylinder? I never close it. Don't you know that it's dangerous? But I've got to open it again tomorrow. What if it leaks overnight? What then, huh? A fat chance, like winning the lottery. Don't you do it again. What's up? Fat, you must stop being so lazy. Hey, hold it. That noise. Making home! What's up? What's up, huh? Well then? <laughs> An explosion! Explosion? One's got a flat tire, that's all! Flat tire? If you had lit that blowpipe just then, we'd have all been killed! No way! I heard a noise, so I checked the hose, and there was a gas leak. I hope he'll be less sloppy now. Don't worry. I'm gonna follow all the rules from now on. You stupid idiot! I nearly had a stroke. We nearly made tomorrow's news headline. Hey, it's all right. There's no need to worry. As long as we all follow safety guidelines, the boss will be happy. And we'll have our peace of mind. Fat! Q? Q? Huh? How do you know I work here? Hey, sis. You mean she's your girlfriend? You're her sister? Come on, Q. What are you doing with a sloppy good-for-nothing like him? Oh, no. That's very meticulous with me. You don't look alike. I tell you what. We're going to be in-laws soon, so let's try to get on. And from now on, I'll follow the safety procedures. After all, I owe it to Q, right? 